Due to popular demand, I decided to make a video on the Sennheiser HD 60S 2 And this is kind of a strange headphone release in 2023 especially because audiophiles in general have gotten smarter. I remember when the HD 660S first released, it was mostly built off of the hype of the Sennheiser HD 650 and HD 600. People didn't understand sound quality that well at the time, at least from a technical perspective with frequency response graphs. So it kind of got some hype. And here we are with the HD 660S in 2022. And while it is undoubtedly better than the HD 660S version one, it is still a joke, especially for the asking price. I love how they cherry picked some reviewers and by they, I mean Sennheiser, to hype up the product before a release date just so that people would think it is good for some reason. And in this video, I'm going to show you why this headphone is not worth the price, but also why it's not necessarily terrible. I by no means would ever listen to the HD 660S because I wanted to, but it's not so bad that I would want to commit suicide. So I took the graph Sennheiser provided for the HD 660S 2 and used Webplot Digitizer to extract the frequency response. And I'm comparing it against the BNK5128 Harman target since this was measured on the BNK5128. As you can see, it is deficient in the sub bass and significantly overshoots in the lower mid range. This causes there to be a lack of punch while also having too much bloat. But at the same time, there are far worse bass profiles than this, and even though it does not sound natural at all, it is still not suicide tier bass in lower mids. In the higher frequency regions, we have really high target adherence until 3 kHz where there's a massive suck out in the response. This was present in the original HD 660S and I was hoping it was addressed in this version. And when they said that the sub bass response was going to be so amazing on this headphone, I was like, maybe they're actually going to follow the Harman target with the HD 660S 2 and give us a good bass profile, but this is really pretty much exactly the same as the HD 650, so I'm not really sure where this improvement is coming from considering the HD 650 was released decades ago. And we even have worse upper mid-range performance with such a big suck out at 4 kilohertz, completely killing detail. This is quite a big scoop too, not really that narrow. From 3 kilohertz all the way to even 6 kilohertz, it's just a huge scoop killing detail. And after that, okay, so here's one of the tricky parts. Well, before I actually explain this, let me just tell you that the predicted preference rating of 69.63 is not very good at all. It basically goes to show that in a double blind test, the Sennheiser HD 660S would likely not score very high with an average score of around 69. So here we have the HD 660S from Sennheiser measured on the BNK5128 compensated for the diffuse field HRTF of the BNK5128. We also have the Harman target here as well for the 5128. And as I pointed out earlier, there is such a huge excess in the lower mid-range causing so much mud in this headphone. It's really not acceptable. Acceptable and tolerable are two different words, so keep that in mind. Just because something is tolerable or listenable does not mean it's acceptable to listen to. And onto the point I wanted to talk about with the diffuse field compensation. If we look at the upper treble in isolation, you might think, oh wow, this is so smooth and great. But you have to keep in mind that this comes after this huge suck out in the upper mid range, so it is going to sound very bright. Although I do not condone EQ, if I were to EQ the Sennheiser HD 660S, I would use maybe four or five filters. One, as you can see here, is to fix this 4600 Hz notch, and a high shelf filter to tame the resulting brightness, a filter to reduce the peaking in the bass, a low shelf filter to have better bass extension. You can make this a little bit more extended in the bass if you want, but honestly, below like 60 Hz, 2 or 3 dB is not going to make that big of a difference, but you can if you want, it'll sound as good as it possibly can pretty much without maybe some slight adjustments with this EQ at least. And honestly, it's not really worth it just because this is a $600 headphone and no one wants to EQ their headphones just to make them sound acceptable. One interesting headphone I found is the Texan HP 300. It's really surprising that Pretty much no one has mentioned this aside from a few people considering it released so long ago and complies so well to the Harman target. I'm not sure about things like build, comfort, and 
pad replacement processes, but if you do want a headphone around $300 that sounds good, maybe this is a good choice. Definitely going to sound way better than the HD660 S2 stock. So yeah, don't buy the HD660 S2. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. I'd like to give a shout out to Base Gamer, Tripped, Felix, Mild Bill, Christopher Yu, the ROFL Reaper, Tripped once again, Fofo, Castlo4141, Straight Up Bemchet, Shininja Coma 3, Hunter, Vsauce 4, Wadyaker, and Snavery. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It's really amazing to have so many great supporters. If anyone else wants to support, be sure to join the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord membership.